guys, welcome back to our channel. In this week's video, we'll be taking you guys behind the scenes of a professional film crew. We are currently in Okrabis in the Northern Cape, South Africa, and we have been given the incredible opportunity to go behind the scenes with a professional film crew that are currently filming a wildlife documentary as well as another series that we'll tell you guys a bit more about later. So to kick things off, we wanted to tell you about the extensive list of equipment that they are currently using. They have three Canon 90Ds, one Canon 80D, one Canon 70D, four GoPro Hero 7s, one Osmo X, one Osmo X5, one Osmo X3. Whew, next page. Four analog buffalo cameras, one digital buffalo camera, one remote control boat, one remote control car, three probe cameras, one Mavic Air zoom, one Mavic thermal. Oh, now to us, that list is just mind boggling. But let's find out a bit more about the production company we'll be spending time with. Africa Cries Film Productions was started by Roland Vinson in 2011 to bring awareness for conservation efforts in Africa. Let's meet the camera crew. Chris, Callan, Tian, Josh, and Caleb. We sat down with Roland to find out what motivated him to start Africa Cries. I was tired of all the negative and biased media narrative that was being put out there by the NGOs and you can't go and fight NGOs like you can fight poachers and uh, they were using the media for themselves to be able to put out a narrative which is which was basically a money-making operation and uh, what I do is I expose the facts of what's going down I expose uh, you know, wildlife as it is in real time. So what I do is, I, the reason why I started Africa Film Production was to, uh, to educate and, bring, and to bring awareness. Africa Cries is currently working on a wildlife documentary following the nesting of black eagles. Today, we're visiting one of the locations where they've been monitoring and filming a black eagle nest. Black eagles often nest on cliff faces, which can make them rather difficult to film. Unfortunately, these eagles have a 1% success rate during their fledgling stage. Their numbers are dwindling faster due to a decrease in habitat and the presence of other predatory birds, such as lana falcons. Welcome to the location of a black eagle's nest where we will be helping the crew with the setup of a solar panel and a buffalo camera. So we've just hiked up to the top of this mountain now. So what we're busy doing is busy setting up solar panels, which will then power the batteries, which will then power the cameras that are being hung over the edge here to catch the black eagles. These cameras will be left in place for months at a time, and all of this will be capturing any movement made by these eagles. This camera is called a buffalo camera. So what you have here is the camera itself and it basically points out here. You have the motherboard and you have the hard drive. This hard drive has got four terabytes of storage and is capable of recording for three months at a time. So this tree behind me here is a quiver tree. 
Uh, it's got really, really sharp and hard leaves, which were actually used by Bushmen to make tools and those sort of things. And quivers, <laughs> hence the name. Animals also use this tree to rub themselves using the sharp edges. The Bushmen also used to dig into the tree and actually use it as a fridge because it gets so cold inside the trunk. If you look at this quiver tree right here, this is housing a huge sociable weaver's nest. I'll walk slowly a bit closer because you actually have to be really careful of snakes around the bottom of the tree. They hang around here waiting for any babies that might fall out and then they feed on them. And you'll also find hundreds of weavers all nesting together in this gigantic nest that takes years and years and years to build. Oftentimes you'll also find a snake um, living inside the nest with the birds that feeds on the birds as well. that's the end of day one wow we did not realize what goes on <laughs> behind the scenes and how much effort goes into like just a simple shot of a bird flying into a nest or soaring in the sky or like an eagle catching something or you know you, it's a few seconds in the final production and it's just hours and hours of effort it's crazy and these guys the camera guys are literally living out in extreme conditions it gets freezing cold like below zero in the evenings and at night and they are camping out at the top of mountains or at the base of some mountains and keeping an eye out on all the equipment and obviously just watching the certain nests that they are in charge of they have no access to electricity no running water or anything like that and yeah they stay out there for months at a time so it's just interesting to see how much effort goes in and how much these guys are putting in it's incredible but that was only day one we are still so excited to see what all goes on behind the scenes So it really feels like every time we go away on a trip, the cold weather seems to come with us. This morning we have been treated to a true Northern Cape winter morning. It is freezing and the wind is absolutely pumping outside. We, we thought that our tables and our chairs had blown away last night, so 2 o'clock this morning we had to run outside to see if everything was still fine. But anyway, today we're doing something rather interesting. We're back on site with the wildlife documentary crew and we're going to a little farm an hour and a half away from here and we're going to be doing something called a recce. So what that basically means is that we are going to be looking for any signs of bushman activity. Because with this wildlife documentary side they are doing a story about the mighty orange river and all the facets and all the parts that make up this mighty orange river and of course the bushmen that lived here all those years ago make up an integral part of this whole system. So as soon as we find or if we find something we will then be coming back with the crew and we'll be documenting everything that we find. This is going to be rather interesting and fingers crossed that we managed to find some sort of artifact or any tools used by the Bushmen all those years ago. Oh, it is honestly so ridiculously cold. I'm sure you can hear the wind in the microphone as well, but we are struggling to just hold the camera and just trying to navigate our way through this landscape. It is difficult, but we're doing it for you guys. <laughs> here is called a stone implement. They're easy to identify amongst all the other rocks here because they're smooth which shows that they're from a river and it's actually proof or just evidence of bushmen bringing these stone implements from the riverbeds and using them out here in these um, desert plains, desert areas to actually hunt and to use them as, as different tools for sharpening things or um, skinning animals, so that's very interesting. Are you 
So we've just finished our first location. It was freezing on top of that mountain, but um, we're on to the next one now. Let's go. pretty cool. As you can see we're in an open cast mine and what they're busy mining is this little rock right here. This rock has then taken and broken down into a fine powder and made into porcelain and ceramic. So there's a very good chance that if you're busy eating or drinking something right now your plate or your mug is made from the same rocks that's coming from this very mine. So we've just made a rather interesting discovery. I just found this little thing and it's called marker. It's actually used to make spaceships and it's also used for electronics. So if you've ever broken your phone and also the screen protectors that you put onto your phones, when you peel those and you see the little flakes flaking away, it's basically this rock and it is everywhere here. So we've just finished with the recce and it is honestly so interesting to find out just what it takes into finding filming locations for this crew. But we unfortunately suffered two casualties and by we I mean me. Number one being I sliced my hand open when I slid down a rock and to make matters even worse I ripped my pants while trying to get back into the vehicle. But we've just arrived back at camp and we want to take you on a quick tour and show you just what it takes to run an operation like this. So this first place is where the head of Africa cries as well as the twins in Africa stay. This is their little campsite. Just over here we have nine jerry cans, 925 litre jerry cans for all the diesel. Got to have all in there that they have to use on site and this is also the ropes that they have to keep for because remember when you mentioned that the black eagles like to perch themselves on steep rock faces. So they have to use these ropes whenever they have to upsell down the faces and get a camera into position. This over here is the equipment room. It's actually a kitchen, but because there's so much stuff, they've had to convert the kitchen into the equipment room. This over here is a tent for the editors and the cameramen. There's some beds in here, and this is also their little kitchen. This is probably our favorite part of the whole setup. This is a vehicle that's been converted into an editing suit. Let's go take a look inside. How's it going? Hello, Merrick. <laughs> and there's our tent all the way down there. But we'll give you a full tour of our campsite as well as showing you around some of the other cool places in the in our next video. So today was really interesting and once again more inside information on what actually goes on behind the scenes. I know we keep saying that but it's a little bit mind boggling to see how much work actually goes in and most of the stuff we did today would be work that goes in before filming even starts so that was really interesting. But just because we're away on a trip doesn't mean that we don't still enjoy getting out for a run. We'll see you guys back again in the morning. We forgot to mention, this whole van is powered by solar panels. That's how they're still able to work and edit when they're out in the bush. But let's get back to those mountains. So that's it for part one. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave us some love in the comments, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss us on any of our adventures moving forward. We'll see you back for part two next week Friday.